So I could um, give a brief introduction of myself uh, while we were waiting. Uh, I'm the product owner of uh, Violin Design System, uh, which is uh, what we call uh, the collection of our components, our themes, uh, and the documentation and some of the tooling uh, that we have and are currently building around those. And um, we're going to have an Ask Me Anything on the Vodin Discord, um, the Vodin Discord chat. Um, you should find through that URL. Uh, go to do what once you're in the Discord uh, server, go to the to the components channel, um, where you can ask me basically anything about theming with Vodin, and hopefully I'll be able to give you some decent answers. Um, I probably, I, I'm going to try to keep this pretty brief, uh, the live, live stream part that is. So uh, if you have any questions about uh, things that I'm presenting here before we go to the AMA, uh, I think it's better if you write them in the Discord chat and I'll get to them there. That way also people who did not take part uh, in this live stream can see um, can see the answers, the questions and answers to those questions uh, if they're interested. So what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, before the AMA is I want to uh, demonstrate a new feature that we introduced in Vadi 19. And uh, that is also coming to Vodin 14.6, which should be coming out in uh, a couple of, within a couple of months, I think in May. So that is the topic of this live stream. Uh, we decided to do a brief demonstration about that um, before we go to the AMA, uh, since well, first of all, there might be questions about that new theming feature. And also I might be referring to that theming feature uh, in uh, my answers to the questions. So I think um, I'm kind of targeting about the 15 minute uh, stream here and then we'll close the stream and I'll head over to the Discord chat to see if there are any questions. So I'll wait for a few more seconds. Because I know that it always takes some people some time to get, really get to any event. I could mention that this is the first time I'm streaming on Twitch. So um, if I mess something up and I suddenly disappear or something, that's just me being a noob. All right, uh, we're five minutes in and I think it's time to get started. So uh, in Body19, uh, we have a new way to apply CSS to a body project. And um, to demonstrate this, I downloaded uh, an, a typical uh, Vodin application uh, template from startvodin.com. And if you've ever used startvodin.com to create a Vodin app, uh, I think you'll recognize uh, the UI that you see here next to me. There it is. And um, if we have a quick look at the code, uh, you'll see that we have this typical Vodin structure here. 
uh, with some Java classes for the, the different views we, ha we have an about view uh, that is just you know an empty empty uh, placeholder page, and we have a main view um, which is uh, kind of like the um, provides the scaffolding like this master detail structure and so on. Uh, well, now this header, I mean, this header structure and navigation and so on. And we have the master detail view. And I'll actually switch now to showing the screen in full screen. Hopefully that font is appropriately sized for you all. And I'll get rid of that banner to get it out of the way. Like so. So basically, what we're looking at is a really typical voting project here. Uh, nothing new and, and weird about it. Um, a master detail view uh, inside of a main view inside of a typical body 19 application. Now, the way that uh, traditionally uh, you have had to do to add your own CSS to an application is uh, if we have a look at, for example, this uh, main view here. And uh, if I can just manage to drag that. Of course, the way that you've done this is by adding these CSS import annotations to, for example, either to a, all of them in a single class, like for example, your main layout class, or to individual views, depending on where you need to have that CSS available. And um, that has worked fairly well, I suppose. And, um, most of you are probably also familiar with um, if you want to apply um, CSS to a specific component, for example, a button, uh, you would have had to do it with the theme for parameter, like, whoop, ah, like so. And because, and you need to do that because uh, the CSS uh, in a voting component is for the most part inside of the shadow DOM of the component, which means that it's isolated from the surrounding DOM structure. So any regular page level CSS or global CSS, if you will, uh, will for the most part not have any effect inside of the component. And the mechanism that we have in Vaadin for getting across that shadow DOM boundary is this theme for attribute uh, parameter in the CSS import annotation. Now, that has been the way to do it until now. And you can still do that in Vaadin 19. However, this has been a bit limiting in a number of ways. First of all, uh, you've had, had a separate CSS import annotation for every single uh, component style sheet and uh, other style sheets that you want to um, add to your application. Another problem with this has been that uh, you've had to put different style sheets in different places. So for, so for example, the component style sheets have had to go to the front end folder. Whereas um, for example, and, and th theoretically you could put any of your style sheets in the front end folder. But there has also been a separate folder uh, in resources, meta inf resources, where you could put where you had to put things like images or icons or fonts. Anything that is not a style sheet has had to go into that folder because reasons that we won't go into now. And one of the problems, in, in addition to being a bit complicated. One of the problems with this approach is that there hasn't been a simple way to uh, define a theme that you can easily package into a jar and then apply to different applications, to different projects. So um, what we did in Vaadi 19 is that we introduced a new concept. We kind of brought back an old concept from the Vaadi 8 days, which is a theme folder. So now when you create a project with start what and come, you'll see that the front end folder contains a themes folder. And inside of that themes folder, there's a theme. Uh, by default, that theme has the name of the project that you created. So my project is called theme demo. 
So uh, by default, the theme could also would also be called theme demo, but you can rename that theme folder to whatever you like. And that theme folder name is the identifier for your theme. And to apply the theme inside of that folder to your application, uh, you go to the application class and use the good old theme annotation. But instead of uh, giving the name of, for example, traditionally you would have said something like luma.class to apply the luma theme, more material class to, to apply the material theme. But now from body 19 for, uh, forward, you will instead supply the name of the theme folder. So my theme folder is called my theme. So I supply that as a string to the theme parameter. Actually, you can skip this value equals here because it's the default parameter for, uh, for that annotation. And what that does is that uh, it, it automatically loads First of all, the style CSS style sheet that is inside of that folder. When you create a new project with what is start, what and come, uh, that folder is, that style sheet is going to be empty, but you can put any CSS in there, any uh, page level global CSS in there and it will automatically be loaded. So to give an example, um, if you want to style this example application a bit differently, uh, I could add a bit of CSS here. I'll, I'll apply it directly to the HTML block so that it affects the entire application UI. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to, for example, uh, change some of the default colors. Oh, now it's live reloading. I'm using the live reload feature, so it, it's going to live reload on its own every now and then. So what I want to do is I want to redefine some of these blue colors that are defaults in Luma. Uh, so, for example, uh, the blue primary buttons and uh, this this light blue um, grid row uh, selection color, and for example, the uh, the focus color of input fields, that blue color. I want to change that into something more exciting. So uh, we can start with just picking the variables, the custom properties that Luma uses to control these, and uh, we can go to the new. Uh, to the new uh, theme documentation, which you'll find in the new documentation site. So if you go to uh, vadin.com slash docs or to the documentation here from the navigation menu, um, and then you go to design system, that's where, well, you're, where you'll find all the new documentation for the, for the components and themes and so on. And um, the... Um, the design system documentation is split into foundation, components, and customization. Now, foundation is basically basically the themes. So if we go to color, we can switch between Luma and material. But what I'm really interested in now is uh, tweaking some of the default Luma variables. And you'll see a listing of all the colors here in the new documentation. And I want to tweak specifically these primary blue colors. So I can copy these variable names like so and i can copy the default values that those have because that gives us a pretty convenient starting point so let's take the luma primary color and i can use the color picker in intellij and tweak to something more exciting like this shocking kind of pink kind of color like so okay and then i can do the same thing with well, there's also a primary text color, which will override similarly. I'll pick that same color that I use for the primary color, but I'll make it a little bit darker uh, to make it more legible as text. And I'll also pick those two other ones. There's a Luma primary color 50%. That's basically uh, the same primary color, but with a 50% opacity. So again, I'll copy that primary color that I created. I'll add, I'll change it from an HSL value to an HSLA value, which gives us the alpha channel. So I can give it a 0 0.5 opacity. 
Now, I'm using HSL values here just because it's more convenient for me to work with them, but you could just as well use hex values if you're more comfortable doing that. And finally, we'll pick, we'll pick that 10% value as well, like so. And I'll also take that same color, oops, forgot the colon, to that one and put it to 10%, like so. Now, whenever I save my changes to style CSS, um, Live Reload will automatically grab those changes. And hopefully now that we go back here, yes, we will see that we have those changes here. So now um, the buttons are pink, the uh, um, selection in the grid is pink, and the uh, focus colors in the input fields are also pink. And so this is automatically loaded and um, if we want to do something else, like let's say that we want to change the color of this header, for example, let's look at look with the inspector what that thing is called. It has an ID of header, so I should be able to just write header and then say background, and I'll use that uh, Luma primary color. Oops, not that one, the regular one, like so. And with a bit of luck, uh, that is already sufficient to apply it to. Oh, okay. Well, of course, that didn't work for some reason. That's interesting. Of course, we have a demo effect here. Wow. Okay. Well, that's typical. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> everything else seems to work just fine. I don't know why that didn't work. But anyway, uh, so, um, but the cool thing about this is that uh, this is how I can apply uh, styles to uh, the global page level CSS. Uh, but a cool thing about this is that I can do the same thing really easily for any components. So instead of having to have a separate, um, yes, good point. I probably need to use background color. Is that, ah, okay, we'll just forget that for now. Yeah, but anyway, so components. I previously had to do a separate CSS import for each component. Uh, but now instead there's a components folder inside of your theme folder. That's a special folder uh, in which any style sheet that is named according to a voting component uh, gets its CSS loaded into that component shadow DOM automatically. So for example, if you want to style the voting text field component, we just need to create a style sheet inside of that folder called voting dash text dash field, which is the uh, element name of the text text field. So if I go into that style sheet. And let's say I want to add, I want to change my text fields to have uh, a border uh, inside uh, or around the, the input field part. So I'm using the input field part name here, uh, which if if we have a look, oh, it's now it's really loading again. If I go to the input field here and I noticed that this div part input field is the actual element that I need to I need to tweak to get that border in the right place. Uh, my best bet is to use this part input field attribute as the selector because that's kind of future proof and considered part of the public API of the component. So part input field, uh, this is a typical uh, standard um, uh, CSS attribute selector. So um, let's say that we want to add a border, one pixel solid, uh, our Luma primary color, 50%. Or we could even say two pixel to make it more visible. And then we just wait for that to reload. And yes, now we have these pink outlines around the, uh, the text fields. I can, I can do the same thing with any voting component here. If I want to do something specific for the button or for the grid, I would just add a voting dash buttoncss or a voting dash grid CSS style sheet. And uh, I might need to actually restart uh, the application when I'm adding new uh, component specific style sheets. 
but uh, that, that sometimes doesn't automatically work with real library load. But once those style sheets are, are there, any changes to them will be automat automatically reflected in the browser. So another cool thing about this new uh, theming feature is that uh, now you don't have to have your style sheets and any other assets that you want to use in a separate place. Instead, you can just put them all in, inside of the theme folder. So as an example, if you want to add, um, if you want to add a, an image, I can just drag an image file to my theme folder. This is just something I grabbed from the internet. Yeah, what's that it to get? So now we have this pink dash one SVG file, and um, I don't have to put it separately to um, this um, resources folder anymore. I can just put it straight into my uh, into my uh, theme folder, and then I can refer to that. And let's see if this works a bit better. Uh, so I want to add a background image. And I want to give it a URL and a point that think SVG. And I probably need to give it a size so that it makes any sense at all in that narrow, narrow space. Hopefully this will work. Yes, it did. It looks absolutely awful. But as you can see, um, it's way easier now to add images or any other uh, assets that you want to use as in your CSS uh, to uh, your application. Also, anything that is in your theme folder is also can also be referenced from Java. So you can use this pink dash one SVG file or any other file in the theme folder uh, in your Java code as well. If you want to, um, if you want to, uh, for example, create an image component that contains that. Uh, SVG. I'll just remove this for now because it looks awful. Uh, another thing you can do that was really tricky before is uh, how to use custom fonts. So let's say that we want to use a custom font here. I'll just add a subfolder here called fonts. You don't have to do that, but I think it's nice to keep things separated. And then I'll just drag a font file. There. This is a WAF2 file, so it should be really, you know, have pretty good browser support and all. And um, then I need to add a bit of add a bit of CSS to actually use that. So I could, for example, in my styles. CSS, I could add a font face declaration that links to that file. So um, the font is called bespoke sans variable. And I'm just adding a font face declaration here that points to that file in the theme folder. Of course, this by itself won't do anything yet. We also need to change the font used by um, the theme. And I can use the Luma font family custom property for that. And well, it's not a hugely different font, but if especially if I zoom in a bit, I think you'll notice that we're not looking at the default uh, Luma font anymore. So even that was really, really simple. And that's something that has been actually kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest, to be do to do with uh, the old way of, of uh, creating themes in Baden. Um, there's an, uh, one final cool feature I want to tell you about, which is that there's this theme JSON file. Uh, I won't get, in, get into the details because I want to keep this short, but one of the things you can do in this theme JSON file, basically the theme JSON file is for configuring um, configuring your theme. So one of the things you can do, which is also there by default when you create a project from start, start what com, is that it defines which uh, Luma modules are imported uh, to your theme. 
And so for example, Lumo has uh, a, a bunch of um, features like badge, for example, that, um, that you can only use if that module, module is uh, loaded into your application. So you can change which modules are, are included using that um, property. Uh, other things you, things you can do with themes JSON is you can define um, you can define a parent theme. So if you need to have a, a parent theme and a child theme, so you need want to have, for example, a, a base theme and then an, one or more um, kind of sub themes that extend that base theme. You can do that by defining a parent theme uh, that for this theme. With that means uh, the parent theme to be loaded first, and then the child theme is loaded on top of that. Other things you can do here is you can define um, NPM assets. You can define uh, style sheets or, or fonts or icons or whatever you want. For example, from Font Awesome, uh, you can you can define uh, those here as well, and those will be automatically added, included in your custom theme. Finally, one of the cool things about uh, this new theme format is that it's, since it's all contained in a single folder and it's all applied with a single annotation, it's really easy to package it into a jar and apply it in uh, any number of projects. So all you need to do is basically package this project as, or a project that just contains the theme as a jar and add it to your Maven repository. And then you just do the same thing. And of course, add that dependency, add it as a, as a, as a dependency to your application. And then you just use the theme annotation to apply uh, the theme using that folder name. And you have a reusable theme. This was actually something that we had uh, in Vitin 8, but that we haven't really had before in Vitin, since Vitin 10. And the one last thing I want to show you before we end the stream and uh, go to the uh, uh, to the uh, ask me anything part on Discord is that uh, one of the things you can do with this package theme it has to do with a new um, tool that we're building which we haven't launched yet. We're going to release it later this spring. Uh, it's called Design System Publisher, and it's a tool that will allow you to create your own um, documentation website for your own design system or component library or UI platform or whatever you want to call it. I have an example here where I've actually applied uh, the theme that I just created uh, to my custom Bodin based uh, documentation website. So this is basically, with this tool, uh, you can basically create your own version of the Vadin component website. For example, where we have all the, you know, the component samples with code samples and all that. You can create your own version of that and apply your own theme to it, add your own components to it and so on. So as an example, if we look at this here, you'll see that um, the checkbox group here uh, has the theme uh, that we just created with the shockingly pink color applied to the samples here. And of course, this can be branded according to your desires. This tool is going to be part of the Prime subscription tier, and uh, we're going to be talking more about it uh, later in April and May. So, um, but the, yeah, but basically, this new theming feature is um, is already in v V19, which was released uh, a while back. Uh, you can use it now. And it's also coming to V14.6, which I think should be released in May. So uh, you can look forward to that. Um, yeah. That's it. Um, there's a document for more documentation on how to create your own theme and how to use it and how to customize it. Um, there's uh, you can go to the uh, vadin.com docs. Make sure that you're on the vadin 18 and later documentation. You can change that version from the version selector here. And once there, uh, you go to design system 
and you go to customization and there's a section on creating a custom theme and also how to package it into uh, a dependency and how to configure it in various ways. Yeah, that is it. And um, now it's time to end the live stream and uh, jump over to the Discord channel uh, for the Ask Me Anything. So, you know, see you there and ask me anything about this or about the old way of doing theming. Um, anything goes for me. Hope this has been useful and see you there.